One of the oldest professions in human history is that of mercenary. When we look at the recorded history of war, the Battle of Kadesh, which was back before 1200 BC, had mercenaries fighting it. So the history of mercenaries is actually far more prevalent than we really like to admit when we think about warfare. The Middle Ages is a period just before the epoch of national standing armies. And indeed, you know, the whole sense of like, you know, national identity in Europe is still you know, coalescing. In a war that lasts 115 years, a peace treaty can last five, six, seven, eight years while everyone's sort of adjusting to new reality. So what you do is you look for action elsewhere. Companies begin to form. Professional soldiers don't want to go back to England, and they become known as the English companies, and they ravage France, and they move towards Italy, which is a land, you know, incredibly rich for freelance soldiers. Anybody who could pay could, could hire in mercenaries. Um, so they're the kind of people who would, you know, say they were the devils incarnate, their form of warfare was unfair, and it would sort of cringe as they advanced, and then they would rush out to hire them nonetheless. Soldiers for hire invariably had no controls. It's all about control. That's what people fear. In the 16th century, the mercenaries that was hired by a city-state often had free reign, and they paid their own way by raping, looting, and pillaging. So I think we've got a hereditary sort of recollection of mercenaries being bad dudes. There are studies that, that, show, they, that show that actually mercenaries were, and the, and the whole kind of you know, mercenary phenomenon in that period was a stimulus to the economy. And that the economy of Italy survived and then grew into the greatest economy in Europe and gave us that high point of civilization that we recognize as the Renaissance. When the nation states were created, we're talking about uh, the late 1800s and into the 1900s. The whole process of state building was to take into the state that monopoly of the use of coercive force and, and use your own army to do that. So really the system that we have come to think of as normal has only really been around for about 100 years. Fast forward, 1980, independence. Rhodesia becomes Zimbabwe. White soldiers don't have a place to go anymore in the new black rule Zimbabwe. They go down to South Africa. They join the South African Defense Forces. Black government comes to South Africa. They set up private security companies. They set up executive outcomes. Executive outcomes mission is to provide the most professional military training related to land, sea and air warfare. It has provided the model for what's going on in Iraq because it was a purely mercenary company. It was a pure private army for sale. They did not pretend to sell any other services at all. They were selling an army. Private military firms are, in a sense, the corporate evolution of the age-old mercenary trade. Mercenary, to me, is, a, is somebody who goes and fights and gets paid for it for a cause that is not necessarily for his country or his nation. Mercenary means reward, I think. I mean, its root is through the Latin for mercis, for reward. Candid conversation with mercenaries often doesn't include frank admission that they're mercenaries, so there's a lot of euphemism. Mercenary is, uh, for those of us in the business, a sort of a pejorative term. It has so many bad connotations that very few of us call ourselves a mercenary. Usually it's a consultant, an employee, um, various other perhaps euphemistic terms. But in the truest sense of the word, since we are working for money, I suppose it is an accurate term. To me, a mercenary is anybody um, willing to fight for money. Uh, that is to say, in a manner completely dissociated from, from political control or moral control. They are unemployed soldiers looking for a way to make a living using the only skills they have, which are these military skills. There's a fundamental difference between an ordinary soldier and a, and a mercenary, if I may use that term. An ordinary soldier who fights under a flag for a particular country has a legitimate use of force, allowing that individual to engage in activities which normally would be considered either criminal or, strictly speaking, murderous. Whereas a mercenary lacks that immediate social justification. Okay. If you look at the UN 
uh, definition of a mercenary. It's a, it's a joke. It, it's it's sort of six bits about you know individuals and whether their motivations and, and serving in wars and so on and. As somebody said, if, if uh, anybody's ever convicted of being a mercenary under the UN law, uh, they should be shot and their lawyer should be shot with them because we're incompetent. The word mercenary has always been a negative word. It's, it's always intended to put down the activity of someone who fights for money rather than ideology. Obviously there have, are cases where the mer so-called mercenaries haven't done what they're supposed to have done or have committed atrocities. But um, generally speaking, the modern day mercenaries, I know them, are very professional soldiers. Now we use in business all kinds of terms and expressions that, that owe themselves to mercenary practice. So you have you know, asset stripping, corporate raid, hostile takeovers. All of these expressions come from military and also specifically mercenary um, strategies and practices. The very word company comes from the free companies which were bands of mercenaries that fought in the Middle Ages in Europe. The term private military company has been popularized in the last 10 years mostly through the efforts of the British mercenary companies who wanted to be seen as something other than mercenaries. This new label that they had arrived at private military company they said that that sounded a bit better. I think a mercenary in quick form would be somebody who does anything without consideration for principle or morality for personal gain, for sole personal gain, and that's it. My company, we've been performing the same services to the private sector around the world since the, since the middle 90s. Uh, no one has ever called us mercenaries. They are providing both personal security and facility security to mining, gas and oil operations around the world. We've never been labelled as a mercenary. We've been, able to, been, been labelled as private security contractors. Per se, there's nothing unethical about the existence of mercenaries. The question of whether or not they are ethical arises only when you ask the question, are they acting within the appropriate legitimate framework that would legitimate that action for the individuals who hire them in the first place? We are going to find Find some killers who are uh, hired to, do, uh, to kill people. The purest form of being a modern mercenary was to serve an executive outcome. They did offensive stuff on behalf of the clients who paid them. While most private security companies um, execute security related tasks in other words they guard stuff and they are equipped to do defensive stuff so there's a watershed between the two for me and the term mercenary is perhaps closer to what executive outcomes was as opposed to all the other modern security companies the big ones like Blackwater and Control Risk etc. Et